My name is Jeff Heyman, and I'm the executive director for public relations, communications, and media at the Peralta Community College District. I've been here a little over 14 years, which is hard for me to believe. And um, so I'm in charge of all of our, our media relations, some of the content on the websites. Uh, we have a TV station, a student radio station, publications like the, the schedule and stuff like that you know, getting press releases out, as I mentioned. Um, all the flyers, all that sort of stuff, events, and, and Diane, Diana there works with me as well. So we, we support the colleges and the district in getting the word out about stuff. Um, before I was, I worked at Peralta, I used to work for the United Nations, and I was a public information officer for the United Nations in the Department of Peacekeeping Operations. And I worked, um, in Bosnia during the war for 18 months, and I was in Rwanda right after the genocide. I was in Cambodia and Angola, and doing public information, a lot of media relations, also running radio and TV operations there. And this was both on the media relations side, acting as deputy spokesperson for the UN and having journalists like Christiana and Ampour sticking microphones in my face and holding press conferences in Sarajevo while I was under siege, uh, but also doing local language outreach initiatives to folks in those countries so they would understand the peace process. So political science, it's all about that. And then I teach here at Laney, at least for the last two semesters, uh, social media for journalists. So it's a, it's a neat class. It's, it's, we've had it two semesters now. And I primarily focus on how social media and journalism kind of interact. It's a good thing. But, but what I've done is, of course, in teaching that class, used social media as part of the classroom instruction. So that's what we're going to talk about today, and then I'll run through social media a, a little bit with you. Um, so in a little more history about Peralta, you know, about five years ago when budget cuts at community colleges started getting real, real rough, you know, there were, our budgets got cut back, you know, people were laid off, classes were cut, students couldn't get the classes they need. There were kind of calls for you know the TV station to get sold and to you know we we're not going to be able to have the budgets to get information out anymore. So I'm thinking, all right, well we're going to have to do something here, right? And about five years ago is when social media really started kind of ramping up. So what we did is we took the. Does everyone know that Peralta has a TV station? So it's on cable primarily. I mean it is a, it's a cable station. It's one of the oldest. It used to be student-run stations. It was started in 1981 and it's one of the oldest uh, community college stations in the country. It's a great thing, we don't want to lose it, we don't want to sell it, all that stuff. But, you know, we got to change with the times. And uh, although, you know, cable TV and having a TV station has a lot of status, I mean, we got to face facts. Not as many people watch TV anymore as they used to. I mean, a lot of people are on social media, a lot of people are just are, don't have time, they've got Netflix, whatever. So we've, and Roku, who's got Roku in here? Okay, I have a special announcement at the end. Remind me if I forget. You're gonna like this one. So anyway, so you know, I, I was thinking, all right, look, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna make this happen, not spend any money, and, and get the word out? So it seemed obvious that we should move towards social media. We really didn't have a social media presence about five years ago or so. We had a website and that was kind of it. So we, we created something called Peralta News and we use the TV station, which used to produce sort of your, your you know, your, your pretty typical, we still do a little bit of that, um, your community affairs program, your academic programs, you know, the kind of Charlie Rose looking show, black background, black table, guy in a black suit, gal in a black suit standing there talking about something. You know, your kind of public TV fair. Um, and we did some other creative stuff. We won some awards. We did a documentary on the Black Panther Party that won the best college video in the country. So, you know, we were doing some other things. It was some neat stuff. But we had to do more. So what we decided to do was reshape the whole thing and turn the TV station basically, the production side basically, into short form video production. And then to use those videos to get, to, and to get those videos out using social media. And, it, and it's been pretty successful. So we, and the great thing is it has dual purpose. So one, we put them on the website. They're on the front page. I'll show you that in a sec. And two, we blast them out on social, different social media platforms. We'll talk about doing that. Uh, we also have a community subscriber list through uh, a company called Gov Delivery, which does a lot 
uh, and then this is all part of social media because you need to kind of get the word out, that does a lot of government things from the White House to the FBI to BART. They all use Gov Delivery, so it's kind of a system for getting stuff out there. And then we also show the videos on the TV station. So we have a lot of PBS style educational programming. Then at the top of the hour, we show a couple of two or three minute videos. So it's kind of dual purpose, and it's been really successful. We have more than 500 videos on our YouTube channel. We started a YouTube channel, and we've had over, I don't, about, I don't even know where we're at, I didn't check, 125,000 views and something like 400 subscribers. So, you know, it's not uh, <laughs> the audience size of like the Super Bowl, but you know, I'll tell you, when you put a video up there and 200 people watch it, and you can track that they're watching it, that's pretty good, because you know people saw it. And that's what's important. So now let's talk about you know, instruction and stuff like that. First, um, let me ask you. So how many folks use social media? OK, well, great. The class is over then. Let's, that's it. You guys are all. And how many, how many people use it like a lot? Yeah, one. OK, so you guys are all pretty sophisticated users. Right? Okay. Good. We're going to talk about that's exactly because you know social media, and we're going to talk about the definition of social media in a sec. Um, you know, and I don't, I, you know, this is I can't do the whole sort of 18-week class in one hour, so we're not going to do that whole thing. But a little bit, I think, is important just to sort of understand what it is and what it isn't. Um, so for those of you that use, well, let's say what is social media? Shout out, shout out some sites. Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, <clears throat> YouTube. Is that really social media? I, I will check on that once in a while. YouTube. Yeah. What What would make YouTube per se social media? What's kind of the definition? I mean, you put a video up there. Interaction via the comments. There you go. If there's some kind of interaction and you have people following your channel, that's social media for me. There's no real definition, frankly. You know, there really isn't. And you know, is anyone an expert on social media? Probably not. It's evolving so fast mm -hmm. that you know you think you know everything, and next week there's something you never heard of. Next week, today, he's going to tell us something nobody I ever heard of, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so okay. So, so let me see. We had Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Anyone use Snapchat? Know what it is? Probably has no application <laughs> in the classroom. Snapchat is like Instagram, but the but the photos only last like um, 30 seconds or something, and you can send it to somebody and they can see it for 30 seconds. Boom, it's gone. So I don't know, but that's that's really big now. People love that. How many people know about the Vine? A couple of people. Okay, what's that? Short videos. Short videos. Yeah. So they're like what? 11 seconds? I can't remember. Yeah. Six seconds? Right. So really short, but you know, that it's super popular. And what, what that tells you, huh, well let's see what happens. There's always gonna be some technical thing. I'm sure it just went to sleep here. I hope, there we go. Yeah. Um, so I think what that sort of tells you, six second video, I mean uh, 11 second videos or whatever is six second or 30 second photos, attention spans are really short. So social media is kind of short form attention span. So on fate, anyone use LinkedIn? No one mentioned LinkedIn. Oh, wow. And the articles are right. really, really short on LinkedIn as well. Yeah. Now, that's primarily, it's, a, it's social media of a certain kind, but it's really primarily for, for you know, jobs and careers and a professional thing, right? Now, of those of you that have, um, okay, now let's do this. All right, so where did, where did social media kind of start? Where? Where? What's the first social media site? How'd the internet start? Now Calvin knows this. Is it military Al Gore? No, Al Gore did, well, he may have claimed that he's the information superhighway. So yeah, the military, the Defense Department wandered away to communicate amongst all of its sites in the post-nuclear world, and they created these redundant computers. And then scientists and universities started using the internet to communicate information. So, you know, in some ways, it's really, really suited for what we're doing in the classroom, right? You're moving information around. And, you know, nowadays we think of social media and, you know, it, 
it's, it's, there's a lot of great stuff it's done. Any, anything from overthrowing governments, depending on which side of the fence you are in that government, it's either a good thing or a really bad thing. But then you have you know, these really, really scary stories about cyberbullying and people killing themselves. So you know, it's kind of gotten a bad reputation, but, but it's also a great democratizer and a great way to share information that none of us would have dreamed about if you're, well, some of you guys are too young even. You probably did dream about it, but some of us older folks are like, wow, that's really amazing. To be able to send a video you know, all over the world like click from my phone. I mean, it's pretty nuts. So, so there's a lot of applications for a lot of stuff. So back to that. So what was, so what was some of the early, now, so that was the internet. So what were some of the early kind of um, more what we would call social media sites? MySpace. 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 Earlier though, let's uh, hold MySpace for a sec. Good one. Okay. Okay. You're dating yourself. That's good. Yeah. Well, that that was a precursor that to kind of precursor to Facebook, right? Yeah. But he, I want to go even earlier. So so it went so it went kind of from uh, those internet sites that the Defense Department had to something called um, um, listservs. How many people? And they're still around, right? I mean, we're on the PIO listserv around the state. Stuff like that. Anyone use a listserv or have used listservs? So those are types of social media because people commented, it was back and forth, it was an open forum for discussion of things. Those things are still really useful. So that was the first one. And then you had gaming communities. Yep. People gaming and people, you know, we like to make fun of those people who are gaming, but I'll tell you, they did, and Calvin will back me up, I'm sure, on this, and, and, it, and if you don't, don't. <laughs> Just go for it. No, I mean, a lot of those people did a lot of technical stuff to advance the technical side. I mean, a lot of the displays and the fast chips that we have from gaming. So all that stuff that you see in video and all that. So, and then they had groups where they all talked and all the games and stuff. And then you had, you know, MySpace and Friendster and all that stuff, right? Blogs come in. And then blogs, blogs kind of came around yeah. that same time. But the very first social media site pretty much recognized, and nobody in this room, if I can find it here, is old enough to remember the Whole Earth Catalog, are they? So the well, is still on is still on and it is the whole earth electric link and that was the very first one and it's still out there and that was basically people now the whole earth catalog was this movement in the late 60s the 70s the internet of it was the it, exactly so it was this movement and the catalog itself was more or less the internet and a way for people to share ideas and share stuff and all that. And then in about, what does it say, 80, yeah, 85 or so, they started an online thing, community, and they're still around. So it's actually been around a long time, but you know, within certain circles. So just a little bit of history about the, you know, the internet and that sort of thing. So you could, so if you want to look up some stuff and all that, you could ask, pose questions here. The well was that kind of thing. So you. If you were know, interested, go ahead and take a look at that. Now, so let's get back to modern times. So we had Facebook and, and we had MySpace. How many people are still on MySpace? How many people were on MySpace? Okay, whoa, Calvin. Yeah, that was quick. That was good, yeah, it was like, yeah, no, not me. Uh, but you know what was weird? There was that time about, let's see, it's probably about 2005 or so, 2004, 2005, where all of a sudden Facebook was like a weird thing that college students did. And, you know, had pictures of people at parties being drunk, and it was like really kind of slimy. And MySpace was kind of like cool and hip and neat, and a lot of music people were on there and entertainment folks. And then I don't know what happened. But all of a sudden, like the young folks got off of Facebook, a bunch of old people like me got on there and their dogs, and then everybody got on there, the young folks came back, and MySpace just disappeared. And Facebook was the big thing. And you know, it, and now MySpace is back, primarily in the entertainment community, stuff like that. And around that time, blogs became really popular. How about uh, uh, dating sites? Is that, is that considered social media? Not that I'm out there. No, I mean, you know. Um, I would call it a form of social media, <laughs> but I, you know, it's more commerce. I mean, they're all commerce, you know, they're money makers, of course. Yeah. But, you know, I think they're selling something, it sounds a little bad. Well, they're selling a service, which a social media site doesn't, net, they sell ads around right. the thing, whereas, uh, you know, so yeah, it's social, a certain way. Um, what's that? 
Oh, wow, that's a new one. See, I told you we learn something every day. Let me write that. No, I just got married, so I'm okay. Um, you call it commerce, it's like it's a dating site, but it's free. Well, I would call it social media. I don't know if you could use it in the classroom, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay, so, right. So now, when we talk about Facebook and all that and blog, so blogs started, but, but they're different. And the reason I don't want to talk about blogs too much, Calvin, is because, you know, this class is about social media. Blogs are more like um, your form of editorializing on the internet, which has some social aspect for sure. And in a longer class, we might talk about how they interact, and they certainly do interact, but I think I'm going to leave that. So, so those of you that have Facebook, I mean, that's kind of what we think of Facebook. You stick up pictures of your dog. That's my dog, Katie Bugs. She has her own Facebook page. And she's got like more friends than me. How many friends does Katie Bugs have? So I mean, that's kind of what we think about, right? Like you put up you know, pictures of your family. 171 friends. My dog has 171 friends. So but now, what do you guys, so here's the real question. What do you guys use social media for right now? Don't use it at all. You never have you ever used it? Doesn't work for you. Okay. Now you're all over it. Yes, I am. Okay. What do you do? I'm try to add you right now. Please do. You'll add back. Okay. Okay. Uh, I use it uh, for communication. I use it for um, leisure. Um, Got it. I use it to add people that just walked in. Okay. <laughs> um, so for fun stuff. But also and communication. communication. Okay. Just because I don't have certain people's emails, but I got a Facebook, so I'll Facebook them. Okay. Good. Anybody else? Um, you know, time, you know. Keeping up with family, maybe too. Uh, Not so much. Yeah. yeah. So job leads. Yeah. Okay. I use YouTube in the classroom. YouTube in the classroom. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, and it's it's way better. You know, now when I, because uh, I teach communication, so my students do speeches and other presentations, and I tape it, and I create, for each class, I create a private YouTube page, or I upload all the videos, and the students go and have, they have to watch themselves and they comment. And what's great is I've caught so many students who have turned in their self evaluation, and I go on the page, and I see there's zero views on their video. It's like, well, how can you comment on your presentation if you didn't watch it? Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so that's a good one. Yeah, LinkedIn, I used it for job contacts. And that's actually, I met someone in Ireland from LinkedIn at Peralta. There you go. Uh, uh, I found all kind of family members. I right. mean, just kinds of family that didn't even, I didn't know existed. Yeah. So. So there you have the professional side and the personal side. So there's all this stuff. And LinkedIn is good even if you're not looking for a job to kind of talk about professional development. There's all kinds of stuff out there. So anybody else using social media for something? Okay. Okay. But do you, how do you use social media? Okay. Good. Great. Well, that's yeah. That's a good way to promote it. Yeah. Anybody else want to add a little bit to it? Okay. So, um, you know, one thing that I like is because I mentioned I work for the United Nations and I literally have friends all over the world on like continents. I can keep in touch with them without having to you know, write emails all the time. So that's really fun. Now, for those of you that say you use social media, do you have two different and this, this, now we're going to get into the actual class. All the rest of that was kind of build up and background history. Do you guys have two different sets of things? Because you really should. Now, I know, so we have one. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. So we have one person that knows what, what I'm talking about. Are you talking about, like, I have two separate accounts. Right. Two separate Facebook accounts. Right. One for the class and one for personal. Right. So that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And also on everything you do, so that's what I meant. Is because it's really important, you know, you, you, if you're out there looking for a job and all that stuff, you don't want those crazy pictures of your dog. You know, well, you might if you're go, you know, going to be a vet, I guess. It'd be good. But, you know, and that's really important. A lot of people don't do that. So you really have to make sure that you have your family stuff over here and your other stuff over there. Okay? And well, I wasn't around not even 10 years ago. Yeah, no. Five years ago, really. Yeah, no. It's totally a new thing. So make sure you do that. And for some folks, you're sitting there going like, oh my God, I don't have any. And now he's saying we need two. But 
maybe you only need one. If you're not going to, I'm, I'm looking at you. You know, if you're not going to use it for family, but you want to use it for class or for teaching or for professional stuff, go ahead and do that. And you know, I, wait, there was a question. Hold on, who had their hand up? Oh, I, I just wanted to say, in my profession, because of the kind of clientele that we deal with, social media becomes an issue for us because part of the therapeutic world is you keep yourself out of it in, in a sense and have people find you that may be schizophrenic or whatever. Okay, well, actually, or you <laughs> have done the perfect segue into what I was going to talk about next. So that's perfect. You must have been reading my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> psychology. So that, no, that's exactly right. And you know, social media, hold on one sec. Social media has that um, sort of aura of being kind of creepy, and people can stalk you, and invade your privacy, and do all kinds of stuff. And sure, that does happen. But you also can control how much, how much you, get, you put out there. And that's why if you want it all to hang out on your private page, let it hang out, that's cool. But I wouldn't do that in your job, for sure. I'd have one over there and then have one that is just professional. I'll talk about the kind of stuff you can put on it in a second. You had a question? Well, my, my, my comments were similar to hers in that the confidentiality Well, because, right. Um, because then you, it's not the same little group that you started out with. It's like all these other people are finding. I've, I've heard all kind of horror stories about Facebook and things that were private to the public. Well, let me let me just say there's a couple of things, and I'm not going to sit here and stand up for Facebook's privacy policy because, of course, they have a lot of, you know a lot of trouble with that. But you can control it to a certain extent. But the one thing you really control is what you put up there. So, you know, on my profession, well, on either side, I'm not going to put anything up there that I don't want to see out there. But you can limit it to just friends or the public or different groups of friends and things like that. But I don't want to get too much into, like, the mechanics of Facebook because that would be a whole thing on itself. But, but here's the thing. Like, in your profession psychology, one of the things you can do, so here, I'll show you. So we go from uh, my dog to... To me, and this is now, this is just the professional one. This isn't the one where I have, you know, my wedding pictures and my aunts and uncles' birthdays and stuff like that. So what I do on this one is, you know, I really don't have anything on there that I'm scared somebody's going to like run with and, you know, uh, go to. The, and I control it. I mean, you know, you got to put up what, what you got. So, so, so what I do, for example, is put up stuff about the class today the workshop today, um, a P-SPAN program that Joe shot right there, people want to see, um, a, another one of our Peralta videos. But then the thing that might be important for you, let me say it, is like, okay, so this is a good one. So I have a column in the local newspaper. So if you're in psychology and you have a paper that, or in any field, math, whatever it might be, you have a paper published in a journal, you're an author, right? You know what I'm talking about. Get it up there. That's not going to hurt anybody's privacy. But that's a good way to let people know, hey, I'm out there. I'm doing stuff. So that's something to do. Yeah? You know, I also like this room. Oh, my God. I this room. people to get in contact with me. But I don't even let my kids acknowledge me as is even related to me. Yeah. I'm not very savvy with the Facebook controls and they change a lot. They do change a lot. And I realized that after one time my client abroad, because I do e therapy as well, in one of my sessions she said, Oh, you have a new book out. And I went, mm. and turns out she Googled me. And I went, mm. fortunately everything that she saw was, had, you know, I was working to get my author stuff. The flip side of it is when I talk to social media experts, what they say, particularly for authors and other people, is that readers want to get into your life, but I realized 
I don't give a lot of that. I mean, I write very carefully. I never mention how, I, I will say three children, but I don't say whether they're girls or boys. Well, that's fine. I mean, if you think about, for one, what's the matter with your client saying, hey, you got a book? Okay, so that's a good thing. But, but if you think about, let's use the analogy of you're an author, and they got that little blurb about you on the back flap, that's all you need to put on Facebook. Don't put anything else. It's up to you what you put up there, right? I mean, you know, there's, now we're not, we're not talking about a Google search. There's all, I mean, I can show you some stuff, some really scary stuff that you can do on a whole, by putting together Google searches, and you can find out, I used to be a private investigator too, I didn't put that into the thing. There's some, I mean, you can piece together people's lives on stuff that's, but we're not talking about that. That's a whole other thing. We maybe we'll have a class on that one. But for example, like, okay, so you know, see, I just put out stuff, or here, this is a good one, again. This one right here. An interesting article about education funding in California. And then a link to the article. So that's not gonna compromise patient or student confidentiality or anything. Hey, here's something really interesting that I found that I'd like to share with you guys. Maybe you get a dialogue going, maybe you don't, but you're out there. So I think that that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's, um, hold on, I hope this is probably gonna kill it. Whoops, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that I mean. Now, um, I wanna talk about a little bit how to use it in the classroom, because we're talking kind of generally uh, and all that, but how many of you guys, anyone use Twitter in here? Twitter alone. Okay, you do. Anybody else? Okay, so, you know, Twitter is a really interesting animal, right? It's 140 characters. Yeah. Anyone know why? No. Is that anything that's too long and can read it? Well, why 140? Why not 142? Well, in the old <laughs> days, I know the answer, so I'm saying, no, I'm sorry. So in the old days, when they used to have those, uh, those simple message things on old school, uh, those little phones, like you could barely call them smartphones, little texting things that were really simple SMS messages, page, well, they're even a little after pagers, okay. those little flip phone things. Yeah. yeah, so that was sort of the max they could do in any one communication. That's how it starts. That's why they did 140. So, but it's amazing what you can do with 140 characters. You can take down a government. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Egypt, okay, the whole Arab Spring, Twitter fed. And I remember when Twitter first came out and I'm going, Twitter, a bird, tweets? But you know, it's it has literally, political science back me up, it's literally changed the world. And it is a great tool for in the classroom because it's a wonderful way without exposing your entire family and pictures of your dogs and your kids and your aunts and uncles and whatever on Facebook, which is a little more, you're right, it's a little, a little more vulnerable on there. There's more information. Twitter is an absolutely great way to get stuff out to your students or to anyone else you want to talk to. Let me give you some examples. How many of you, do anyone have a web page? Some people do, right? So when you get a job here, we give them a free web page and you get to do that. So I, would, so I use this for my journalism class and I have all my class links over here and the assignments and stuff like that. This is really how to use it. And all of these things are linked to you know, the lesson plan of that day. So that's a good way of actually using it in the classroom. Now, since I teach the social media class, so what I've done is, I, so I obviously have a Twitter thing, and that's, that's it right there. But what I did is, how many people know what, see this thing here, journalism65, the at sign? How many people know what hashtags are? Okay, okay, so this is super important. So what's the difference between a hashtag in Twitter? Am I going too fast? No, I didn't know there was. Hashtag. Like, Hash browns. What's the difference between a hashtag and that at sign on Twitter? All right, go ahead, save it, because we know you know. You get extra credit anyway. I was going to say the, Try it. the at sign generally means their address, right. but the hashtag is when you're doing a topic and you exactly. want to start a group. 
Okay, that's exactly right. So the at sign is an address, or they call it a handle. Okay, and the hat, that's the little at sign. And the hashtag means a topic or some area of interest. What's beautiful about that is you can create, oh my God, see there is a picture of me getting married there. Um, so you can, you can create any subject you want. It isn't like Twitter has to create it for you. As soon as you put hashtag anything, you've created that subject. So it can be super, you can only let two or three people know, right? Um, people will see it on your feed if they're following you, or you can let the world know. For example, um, I don't want to go back too far, but um, okay, political science, here's a good example for you. So Syria, all the stuff that's going on in Syria, right? There, if you go hashtag Syria, you've got everyone from the US ambassador to the United Nations who used to be a friend of mine, Sam Power. You have her, I don't know if she's writing her tweets, you have her on that thing and you have rebels in Syria on that thing. Okay, it doesn't get more democratic than that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now, and you get like everyone in between and a bunch of crazy people and who knows what. Okay, you got all that. But it is a great feed to find out what's going on out there, whatever topic you're teaching. Math, there's billions of math things. Yep. In fact, we just did here, I'll show you one. So here's a great example, right in the classroom. So uh, Joe, did you do the Keith, what's his name, Devlin thing? Yeah. Right here, okay, you see where I'm pointing? So Joe filmed the Keith uh, Devlin talk at Berkeley City College. Right? So here it is. So here's Keith, this is a math guy. This is a, the, a math professor at Stanford University, okay? So you math folks, it's school. So he did a talk up at Berkeley, Joe filmed it. He's got his pro, he's got his thing. See the, see the at address there? So if we go there, that's him, right? Now look at this, he's got 5,000 followers. Okay, I've only got 100 at the most. But that isn't the thing. But I, I included his at sign Right? I included at Berkeley so all the students could see it. All the Peralta colleges people can see it and Peralta TV and it's a new thing, we don't have that many followers. And then I included a picture, the video, in 140 characters. Right, so there he is doing his thing. Boom, a couple of clicks, you're there. Now what you could also do with that, that would be really good, now, what was great is he retweeted it. So it went from my 100 followers and a couple thousand people on Peralta's thing to his 5,000 followers. Okay, that's pretty powerful stuff. But more importantly, in the classroom, let's say you're teaching a math class, you see this guy get, did a thing, um, I, I don't know what math class you teach, but maybe you do, maybe you create a hashtag called hashtag Laney Math 206. Nobody's going to have that hashtag out there. You tell all your students, all right, guys, and you know, students have Twitter because they're all looking at sports and entertainment and music, and they've got it. You say, all right, part of the requirement for this class is that either you create another account for class, I don't want to see your party pictures, but you've got to follow the Twitter account and you've got to comment. So I'm going to be sending stuff throughout the week. And I, and I want you to make sure you see this, and I'll know you see it just like Dee Dee said, by how many click, how many things are on the, I want you to comment as soon as you've seen that thing, and I can watch the clicks. Okay, so everyone okay with that, with me on it? Okay, so that, that works pretty good. I, I, I was gonna play a, yeah, well we're running out of time, I was gonna play a little um, NPR segment. Now if you wanna hear some of this stuff, there's a history of hashtags and Twitter, and um, the Arab Spring. You can go to my the journalism site and just do just search Laney College Jeff Heyman will pop up because the URL is too long here for that. But you can just go under uh, class links and there's a whole bunch of videos and stuff that you can watch to get an idea about that. So I won't take up too much time with that. But um, let me let me say one. Let's see. Since we're running out of time, I'm trying to figure out which way to go here. Um, all right, this is, okay, this is, this is kind of good. Anyone know what Bitly is? Bitly. The high school? No, Bitly. Okay, good, so we. You know, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Come on. Bitly, bit.ly. Bit. Well, okay, take some notes on this one. This is super important. 
Okay, now, you know, when you have these, see, see this URL, everyone know what a URL is? Yes. What's it stand for, URL? Thank you. Yes. Is it resource or record? I'm not for sure. I think it's resource. Uh, universal uh, record resource located. located. Universal resource located. Resource located. So universal resource located. Right. So that's a URL. Now some of these things get crazy long, right? For example, um, mm -mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so here's my monthly column, which of course hasn't been updated. Look at the size of that URL, right? It's crazy. So you got 140 characters there. What are you gonna do? Here's what you're gonna do. So you go to bit.ly, this is really important. B-I-T-L-Y, okay? Bit.ly your bookmarks. Make sure you, you actually sign up for an account. And I'll tell you why. Now, you can do it for free. And, well, it is free anyway, but you can do it without signing up. You just put a link in there, and it will shorten it down. But if you sign, sign up, and I already have, and you can do it with Facebook, so I just use my Facebook thing. Let's see if it actually works. Yeah. Okay. So what the cool thing is, you put your, 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 these long things here, outstanding. Okay, so then again, look how long this is, right? Okay, on Bitly, it's that long right there. So it's, uh, what, about an eighth of the size. So that saves you a lot of space, a lot of characters. You can also actually use that little tool there to change it. So you could do bit.ly slash math 206 number one. So you can do it. But, want to see what's really, really cool about that? All right, view stats. You know exactly when people are looking at it and how many. Okay, it doesn't cost you anything. I was one of those. Thank you. That was great. So you saw that come around. And what's cool is then you can like, you can also see, hey, it's getting out on Facebook. Look, see, I don't have that many followers. It's okay. It's getting out on Twitter, and it's getting. What is this other one? Anybody know? That's that Gov Delivery thing that we use, right here. You see, look at that, Peralta EDU, somebody, somebody forwarded it to somebody else. So you can actually track your students, they're watching it. I mean, we're not trying to be big brother, but you know, it's kind of like they turn in an assignment, the same thing like that. You can see if they're looking at stuff and how many. It's really powerful. So when you see in any class you're teaching, any subject area, really interesting article, you want your students to read about it, right? Catch that URL. Stick it in Bitly, and plus it keeps everything you've ever done. So the great thing is, not only the NSA knows exactly what you're reading, but um, the great thing is, you know, you you have this. So when you teach next semester, you can use the same bookmarks or same Bitly marks. So whatever you so like. So you can take articles that you've written, the URL, and see how many and track how many. Worth the price of admission by itself, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really good and it's free. So, so, so make sure you do that. You know, and you can see sometimes people click on my stuff, sometimes they don't. But oh, my wedding album people clicked on. Um, you know, so it's, but it, it's a real good way to see. Okay, so that's sort of important to know. Um, the other thing I wanted to sort of talk about is using, okay, let's do this. So, on Twitter and using Bitly is a good way to get stuff out to students, to the community, to your peers, looking for a job, all this kind of stuff we're talking about here. But, you know, if you're teaching a few classes and you've got your own personal Twitter account and you're monitoring stuff that you want to read, how do you keep track of all that stuff? There's this uh, application called TweetDeck. It's a free app, you download it, it's, it's run by Twitter. And this allows you to monitor all of your Twitter feeds and other feeds and kind of keep track of what's going on out there. This is really good for not only if, if all your students are tweeting about the class and you have your journalism 65, you know, hash mark journalism 65 link, but let's say you're following, for me I follow a lot of journal things, um, I follow like the PFT feed, so I know what the union's talking about. 
and, and not to spy or anything, because sometimes you know, it's really interesting. And then I go, well, that's kind of neat, and I retweet that over to my thing. So this is a good, so, and you know, here's some of the stuff that I'm, I'm watching to see what goes on. But you can see all the tweets that you've done. You can see all the interactions you've had, or acti whoops, I think I passed it. Yeah, interactions. So this would be like people that have either commented on me or somehow followed me, stuff like that. So you can really see what's going on. You can keep track of it so you can break it down. So instead of just having that one account that shows your tweets, you can watch a whole bunch of stuff. I kind of track all the colleges throughout the day and see what's happening. So here's the, whoops. And this, this you can do, this screen size isn't great. The College of Alameda, all the tweets that they're doing. Online news is out today. This is a great one. There you go. So we can, and we might want to, oh, well, except they should keep it up. No content. But so, you know, you could see exactly, you know, what is happening and stuff like that. Now, what's important about this is, again, you might say, well, God, how do I use that in the classroom? Here's how you use it. Psychology, math, what other disciplines do we have? Political science. Political science is really easy. You know, that one's, that one's great. Like I follow the UN, but you could follow, there's, I'm sure I haven't looked it up because I'm not, you know, math isn't my, my subject area, but there's a ton of maths, IT, tons of IT stuff out there. You, you find ones that are really relevant to what you're teaching, your subject area, and you start following them. And then you say to this hashtag at your class number, hey, this is a great story. I want you to read it this week. We're going to discuss it in class on Friday. It's really powerful stuff. I mean, in the old days, it used to be, and I actually still do it, see something in the newspaper, you tear the article out, you bring it to class, you go, hey, guys. <laughs> right? Well, no. So nowadays, it's like, hey, I saw this in the New York Times. It's exactly relevant to what we're talking about. Um, you tweet it out to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and on Friday, I want you to read it. Friday, we're going to discuss it. And you use Bitly to cut it down. You see what they're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that good? So yeah. Twitter is the most effective way for you to I think it's very effective, whether it's the most, uh, you know, I, I don't know, you could set, I mean, you could do a lot of things. You set up a blog for your class and, have, and make them comment on that. Um, you could do a bunch of stuff, but I, it's really easy, it's free, um, and it's fast. You know, I mean, I could literally go, hey, um, you know, take a picture of this and go like, hey, what do you think of this ad and something like that and send it. And then, you know, it could, it could be pretty good. So I, I think it's very effective. There's other stuff which I don't know if we're going to get a chance to really go into, but like YouTube, as Dee Dee was saying. So anybody here have a YouTube channel? What do you use it for? Um, I used it because a woman had a blog and she had me answer questions about my book. And I had been writing, writing, writing so much, and I thought I'd do something different. So I took the questions and answered them on YouTube. There you go. And she just put the link up, so they got to interact with me or see me. So that's, uh, let me see if we got it here. Okay, so anyone, it, it's super easy to set up a YouTube channel. You just need an email address. And again, you know, don't, how many people use Gmail? Gmail. Yeah, pretty much everyone. So, you know, if you're, Again, a little sensitive about using your personal email address or your, Gmail, or your personal Gmail address. Make up another one. Just make one up. You know, math so-and-so, PIO so-and-so, staff development officer so-and-so. You know, whatever it might be. Faculty internship diversity at Gmail, whatever. Make it up then use that to start the YouTube channel, if you want. And the thing about YouTube that's cool, now Didi, do you, you shoot, you do shoot videos, shoot videos, and you upload them to the YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I, I create a different private one for every class, like this semester at Speech Suite, I do one section five, and it'll be disabled as soon as the semester is over. And only, I only give my students the password. Comments are all disabled. You can't talk about stuff in it. And it just, <laughs> students go there, they watch their video, and they do their stuff. Right. Yeah. So. But what's great about it is that, like, you know, maybe they do three or four presentations a semester and they can see their progress. Right, exactly. So as an example, so Peralta TV has a YouTube channel. We have what we call, there's different playlists. We have over 500 videos, so I'm not going to go through all those. But we also, Joe does this thing, let's see, where are we down here? P-SPAN, did I miss it?
well, somewhere on here. But um, we tape class lectures. So if you'd like us, when you guys get, you know, we start teaching stuff like that, or you know, if you have a presentation that's that's you think we, you know, you want others to see, we'll tape it for you. Then all you got to do is link that. But if you want, like like Didi has said, just create a YouTube channel yourself for your class. Find videos you can find existing videos. Click favorites, and it will go over to your YouTube channel. Then you could assign them to your students to watch. And the great thing is, make them comment on the video. That way you know they did their assignment, right? So that's another great way to use social media in the classroom. So again, another way to, uh, one thing to do is if you want to do it real quick is, you know, I would really strongly suggest, if you don't already have it, getting some kind of professional uh, website. Have your different classes up there, have your papers up there, and then use Twitter to drive traffic to that. Because the important thing is, y y you know, you want to build up <laughs> things. Now, it's perfectly fine to, you know, tweet out a, a, an interesting article on, on math or psychology or something like that, but it's not your article, or it might be yours. But if you can drive them to your website, they'll see other stuff. That'll be really good. And your, and your students will see other things. So I would really, and then you can also, you know, like, okay, so here we did a thing on, okay, so here's one for you. So, you know, you found a, we were talking about privacy and Facebook and all that stuff, and we, you know, I wanted to show them a little video. He's driving with a box stuck under his car. And like, who knows how long he was driving. I saw him pull out of the parking lot and turn right, and the box was still stuck under his car. So who knows how long he was driving with that box under his car. I like bet he got home, he pulled into his driveway. Out in the sky. I'm not, I'm not. Wow. Do you like me this? It's not. It's not no. real. I don't think it's real. Oh, I don't think it's maybe real. Maybe there's a way. Did I see the line of her car? It's been wasted. The Empire State Building is like really close to it. It's a big <laughs> All right, so you know that's how your students are, are interacting with media and stuff these days. So I think the important thing to take away from that is, you know, don't ask them to log on to their email and check your website. You need to be tweeting them and getting out there and seeing them on social media. That, that's what they're doing up there. But the other thing that, that see, I showed that in class, and we talked about, you know, how are people. So that's a good way to to, to use social media to actually. That was a YouTube video that I read about in the New York Times that talked about how social media is being, and I put it up in class. We had a big discussion and stuff like that. So with that, I think I'll open it up for questions, unless there's anything. Susan, anything you think I really need to touch on that we might not have? No, no. Okay. Thank well, thank you. Well, any questions or anything? I just had a question about TED Talks. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else out there? I mean, I really like TED Talks, but is there anything out there that rivals it that you've seen or? Well, te okay, but it's not social media. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I just so, I mean, 
Well, there's a ton, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff out there. You know, there's all those how to do it videos on YouTube. Um, my, you know, I don't know, there's PBS channels. So I, there's a ton of things. TED Talks are really cool. Um, yeah. So I don't know what their use policy is and stuff. I, I'm sure you could use them in the classroom, no problem. But that's a good source of things to talk about, for sure. So you could, again, get those and show them in class. But there's not a real social aspect to that. They just, they're just videos. Um, speaking of TED Talks, let me do the Roku announcement. So we had how many Roku watchers? All right. So, we just, so Roku, if you don't know what it is, and this is actually the way the world's going to that kind of thing that we just saw. And TV's going to be basically a box or a thumb drive that goes into your computer. So Netflix, um, Roku is a small box about that big that allows you to get what they call all these channels or apps. And they're all the, and TED Talks has one. Oh, I didn't know. I just got a Roku, so. <laughs> okay, so you're going to love it. And, all, and they have all these different channels. You can have Netflix on there so you can watch your movies. They have TED Talks on there. Everyone know what TED Talks are? Yeah. So, and then they have Smithsonian Channel, PBS, NFL. I mean, they've got everything. But here's the cool thing. You can also develop what's called a private channel. On your own, there's a development kit. It's a little tricky, but not impossible to do. And we just created a Peralta TV channel on Roku. Roku is the biggest, um, I don't know what you call it, box top, dist video distribution box top in the world right now. It's not cable, it's not satellite, but it shares the most number of videos. So we now have a little app that you can click, and those of you that have Roku, go look up Peralta TV, it's under new, because we just did it, and stuff like that. I'm not saying you need one of those for every one of your classes, but you know, maybe one day as it gets easier and easier, that will be something that's kind of like a YouTube channel. But here's the thing, it's in HD on your TV, right there looking really good. So you're saying that if you if you are able to find a way to use your, set up your private Roku channel, it will come through to viewers in HD. All, if you put in HD, it'll come out HD. All, whoever has Roku, all over the world, it's great. Not social media exactly, but it's a great distribution for videos and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Did you have a question? How does that spell? Roku is R-O-K-U. I don't own stock. <laughs> Just. Sir. Talk about your dad's question now. You can use multiple uh, accounts, right? Uh, you, know, you, you have one for class, and you have like, suppose you have like a private business or something else to do, you can use another, you know, create another address for that. Yeah, so, you know, um, I. I Okay, so there's a, we do a whole thing on, on fair use policies and user policies in my class. So, so let me do a mini version of that, because it'll get to your question in a second. All right, how many of you read those user policies? <laughs> They're so long. How many, how many times do you use the, how many times do you read the user policy or whatever they call it? The user agreement. Nobody reads them. They're 50 pages long. So I had a lawyer come into class, and you know what he said to the class? We were talking about that. He said, don't worry about it. Huh. So, all the, so all the stuff they say about only one account, you have to be such and such an age, don't worry about it. Just do it. Change your name. Say so I have one that's Jeff Heyman, one that's Jeffrey Heyman. Jeffrey Michael Heyman, I could have three, whatever. I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not saying you should lie. Don't ever lie. We don't, no, I mean, seriously, don't. But you know, if you're one, well, is the video still running? Okay, never mind. Just get creative. You know, so when I sign, now there's, I don't know, millions of probably dog Facebook pages out there, right? <laughs> totally against any of the user agreements. One thing is, I think it says in Facebook you have to be 14 years old. My dog is six. The, here's a little funny story. Just, here's a funny story. So, you know, it, had, it has this thing like, on Facebook where it says, you know, you like men, you like women, whatever. So she's a dog, so I put likes men and women at first. She started, my dog started getting all these like, bi, gay by the bay and bisexual invites. I'm like, whoa, whoa, she's a dog. It was really, really cute. So I took that down, and now she, she just is a dog again. So you know, 
you're not really supposed to have dog Facebook pages up there, but go ahead and do it. So if you have two or three, I don't think anyone's going to come after you. And according to the lawyers, they're probably not going to come after you. And even if they did, it's not going to stand up in court. So don't worry. All right, I think you're okay. So have you had students submit assignments or you know, some type of writing assignments through a social media medium, such as uh, them creating their own blog and yeah. respond, or then adding your know, personal Facebook or your professional Facebook and writing a note and tagging you in it? Yep. So, so you have done that. Yeah, that's what, the, so in the social media class, what they have to do is they have to create a Twitter account and a Facebook account, okay? Or use the existing one they have. If they don't want to use their personal one, they don't have to. But they gotta create one for the, for the class. And then we have topics that we talk about. They're not, unfortunately it's not, we haven't done one this last week, so you won't really see it. But, okay, so there'll be, so they have to choose, one of the things was to, to, to follow a news event, okay? Follow a local news event on a blog or a local online media site. Okay, SF Gate, Oakland Local, uh, Alameda Patch, whatever. You know, follow a thing and to tweet three times about whatever it was you're following using a hashtag and the at sign. So what they did is you had to identify what the thing was and you had to tweet about it in class. And then the next week in the class, we went over them and we had them explain, now was this effective, was this not effective, stuff like that. What do you mean effective? In other words, like some people would just take, like they'd copy whatever the subject was. Remember that fire that was up at UC Berkeley a couple weeks ago? That was one, somebody, I don't know, they were all into that, I don't know why. And somebody would just put like, I think there was a hashtag Cal Fire. No, it wasn't Cal Fire, it was like UC Fire, something like that, right? And they just put that up there. I said, well, I'm not gonna read that, what does that mean? Other people would write, big fire at, at UC, uh, details here. And then they'd have some other things. So you talk about how effective you can be in 140 characters. Or the other thing that, one of the things that they did have to do, for those of them that have, some of them have blogs, or they're, some of them are writers, you know, they're, they're student journalists, so they do write for some things. They had to put up a link to one of their uh, stories or columns, and then tweet it out to the whole class. So it's a really good way to, to get interaction going. And like you saw in that video, they're all like this all the time. So when they, you know, when they see that come up, you have a better chance of them responding to you. So, any other questions or anything? Okay, great, well thank you. Thank you again, Susan. And I'll be around if you guys have anything after class. Okay, thanks.